guys welcome back to fairies tutorials in today's episode we're looking at food nutrition and health section 4 food science and technology content 11 which has to do with the effects of heat on the composition and structure of protein foods stay tuned and technology content 11 effects of heat on the composition and structure of protein foods now let's take a look at our focus points so we'll be looking at the different types of protein foods defining some key terminologies and also evaluate the effects of dry heat and moist heat on protein foods now we're kicking things off with looking at the types of protein foods now there are two categories right there is food from animals and also plant foods right so the two pro protein sources are animal protein and plant proteins now examples of animal protein includes fish poultry meat eggs also products dairy products which include cheese and milk all right now as it relates to plant proteins there are nuts uh there are legumes peas and beans you name it there is red beans gungu beans there is chickpeas quite a few right a range of plant proteins that are available now let's take a look at moist heat versus dry heat now moist heat uses water and steam just a reminder and dry heat involves the circulation of hot air and also contact to fat that transfer heat as well now let us look at the key terminologies and the four main ones that we're looking at are denaturation millard reaction coagulation and synergesis now based on the images on your screen you should be able to put one and two together to discover the meaning of these key terms but let us look a little deeper at the definitions of these terms so the first one is denaturation now denature means to change properties once a protein has denatured it cannot return to its original form now an example of this is the application of heat to egg right after the egg has been cooked can it be changed to its original form no it can't therefore it has been denatured meaning that it's changed from its natural or its original form our next key term that we're looking at is coagulation. Now, the second step of denaturation, which is changing the form of the product, for example, if we're talking about egg, is coagulation, whereby protein thickens and change into solid mass. And if we're supposed to define coagulation, it is defined as the change in the structure of protein from a liquid form to solid or a thicker liquid brought about by heat or mechanical action or even acid right so acid in the case of say we're poaching we're poaching some eggs acid may be added in the form of vinegar to speed up the process of coagulation right now let us look at our next term and the next one is serenesis good now, serenesis occurs when the coagulation process continues due to heating. So, as you can see, it's a process. So, when we start to cook, for example, the egg, first it denatures, then it coagulates, then if we continue to cook, then serenesis will take place, right? Now, this is seen when the protein squeezes or oozes out liquid in the product. For example, 
curdling in custards, the separation of liquid from meat when it is cooked to well done, and the weeping of liquid from, say, a meringue on the top of a lemon meringue pie. So when proteins are overcooked, then serenesis may come into play where the oozing of the liquid will come from the food product, right? Now, serenesis is the sudden release of moisture contained within the protein molecules, usually caused by excessive heat, which overhardens the protective shell. So what is happening here, we do not want to cook our protein rich item until it reached to the to the process where serenesis is evident, right? Because when that happens, it means that a product is overcooked, it may become dry and become hard and may be difficult to chew or even to digest. As let's take a look at the effects of overcoagulation. So in this first step, of course, we know that denatured is the first step. So denatured protein firstly become more digestible as protein unfold during cooking. Now gradually, if heating continues to take place, proteins denature more and become tougher and less digestible. Now, protein loses functionality in being able to hold and to set. And therefore, what you notice takes place. Now, serenesis will take place, right? So when the product, the protein product has been overcoagulated, so it's denatured first by changing its original state, its original state, it's coagulates, which allows it to set. And if heating continues, then serenesis will take place where the liquid will ooze out of the dish. And as you can see there with the bottom picture of the scrambled eggs, where the water surrounds the product. Oh, well, let's move on to our next term, which is Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between an amino acid and a reducing sugar usually requiring the addition of heat. Now, like caramelization, as we looked at the effects of heat on carbohydrates, where we looked at the effects of dry and moist heat on sugar, now you notice that caramelization will take place with the effects of dry heat. So like caramelization, guys, it is a form, Maillard reaction is a form of non-enzymatic browning, right? Now, when we speak of enzymatic browning, we're talking about the reaction of the enzymes that have been activated in the food product and also with oxygen that starts to break down and deteriorate the product. Now, in this case, Maillard reaction is not so, right? It is a form of non-enzymatic browning. When heat is applied, the amino acid and the, reaction, the reducing sugar will uh, react together and then you get that nice brown color that may be on steaks or pork that are grilled or seared, right? Now, let's take a look at this example as you can see here on your right. Now, products with Maillard reactions. The Maillard reaction is responsible for many colors and flavors in food stuff. So the caramel from milk and sugar the color of beef, chocolate, coffee, and maple syrup, the flavor of roast meat, and also the color of dried or condensed milk, right? So that slightish, that nice brown color will give its distinctive taste, look, and also flavor, good? Now, let us now look at a deeper look on the effects of heat on protein foods. And here you will find out that some of the terms, the terms that we have discussed before, they are coming out, right? So when proteins are heated, their chemical structure is denatured. And remember what denatured is? When, it's, when it changes from its original state. No, this is a permanent alteration and cannot be reversed. As heating continues, protein coagulates, meaning it sets, right? And gradually becomes less soluble. However, if overheated, 
they become less digestible and serenesis that we looked at earlier will start to take place where the oozing of all that moisture and liquid coming from the food product uh, they will come out the moisture will come out the product will be dry and become less digestible now let us look at some deeper properties of protein and coagulation as we said before protein sets and then hardens and an example of this is hard boiled eggs maillard reaction which may cause a change in color where red meat upon grilling or searing or cooking will turn to brown also when heat is applied the product become more tenderized right especially about moist heat so collagen in meat changes to gelatin and therefore it becomes more digestible where the fibers will fall apart and it's you're better able to chew the product also guys another effect that heat may have on uh animal protein if we heat for too long it becomes indigestible so overcooked meat or cheese will become tough and hard to digest right now let us look at fish now the connective tissue contains collagen but not elastin and that is why fish is easier to cook than meat right and this is quickly converted to gelatin likewise when we're cooking meat no have you ever wondered why why fish flakes apart when it is cooked well, the result of that is the degradation of the connective tissues, right? That causes the fish to break apart into flakes. Now, too high temperatures or lengthy cooking will cause the muscle protein in fish to shrink, leaving the fish tough and dry. So whilst cooking will make it more digestible, make it flakes apart and become more tender, if it is overcooked, then the fish will shrink and also it becomes tough and dry. Now let's take a look at eggs. Coagulation is the change from liquid to solid state with no specific structure, right? Now this occurs in shirred custard and in fried or boiled eggs. Egg white and egg yolk coagulates at different temperature. No excessive heating is destructive to eggs. Egg protein becomes tough and rubbery when cooked for too long at high temperature. So we can see that the protein will coagulate. It will be nature. If it overcooks, serenesis will take place. And then as a result, the product will become tough and hard to digest. Good. Now let us look at what happened to plant protein. So we're talking about the legumes, right? When plant protein are cooked, they become more tender and digestible. And of course, with all products that are cooked, bulk is reduced. However, oftentimes because uh, pulses are a little on the harder side to cook, especially when they're dried, extended cooking to make them tender often overcooks the other soft part and causes nutrient loss so with the effects of heat on plant protein they become more tender and digestible bulk is reduced but if they're because they're cooked for extended hours sometimes then you find out that the water soluble nutrients are lost easily good now let us look at our questions number one an egg custard will set and retain its shape due to A, coagulation, B, caramelization, C, gelatinization, or D, dextrinization. Which is the answer, guys? If your response is A, which is coagulation, you are indeed correct. Next question. When a boiled egg custard curdles, this means that the protein molecules have been coiled, bonded, denatured, or dextrinized, which is the correct answer. If your response is denatured, you are correct. Next question. Describe the effects of heat on pigeon peas or gungu peas, right? Another question may be, describe the effects of heat on meat, 
and also describe what happens to meat when it is cooked by moist heat methods and by dry heat method so moist heat method remember we're talking about stewing we're talking about boiling in some instances like with uh fish we're talking about steaming good and for dry heat we may be talking about broil roast bake or uh, you name it right now with dry heat cooking method what you will find is that we use more tender cuts so those cuts will they, they develop flavor based on the dry heat method that are used they're more flavorful and also they tend to be more what color so they are more attractive and that attractiveness is due to the maillard reaction whereas with moist heat method meats the meat tough cuts of meats are also flavorful because they are cooked for longer periods of time then the extractives are released and it will develop more flavor in the product so oh guys, these are just some samples of past paper questions that may that you will see based on the topics that we have covered. You're awesome. You've made it to the end of the session. Please remember to like, subscribe, and also share with persons who you know will find this information useful. Thank you for making it Paris Tutorials.